Seriously, it, it takes a lot for me to say something like this, but I personally think pound for pound, dollar for dollar, this is maybe one of the best brands on the planet right now. Good morning and welcome everybody to Bish's RV. Well, morning where I'm at when I'm recording this. I don't know, it might be 3.37. You might be sitting on the toilet at work watching this on your phone. I don't know. I don't know your life. Anyway, um, <laughs> we're in Coopersville, Michigan today, just outside of Grand Rapids, taking a look at some fresh 23 updates on what I think is a criminally underrated bunkhouse family floor plan right here. We're looking at it in a Flagstaff. Rockwood uh, and Flagstaff are the exact same thing. I just refer to them as Rockstaff from here on forward. The thing is, this is a brand that is really well known for their couples models, but they do some bang up bunkhouses, and this is a good example. And the thing is, they're always doing things plus one differently. One of the things I'm really glad to see for the 23 season though, they have gotten rid of the carpet in the slide outs. That was the number one request I saw across the Rockwood and Flagstaff family last year. Why do they have carpet? Well, they got rid of it. But that's just like one little thing, like they have an improved solar package now, which is awesome, 200 watts instead of 190. Um, and uh, they're using a charge controller that you could expand on further on that if you wanted extra solar. I believe you could actually slap two more of those 200 watt panels on this to get a 600 watt package. And this comes with factory inverter. They're always doing and instead of or, like they do a rear hitch and a rear bumper instead of or. They're doing <laughs> the Sir mix lot uh, double awning, uh, uh, like they have two power awnings on this with LED lighting for just flat max patio coverage that covers both entry doors because one big awning wouldn't do. So they said, well, that sucks eggs. Let's do two awnings. They're doing the double David Blaine magic step situation, Goodyear tires and TPMS and like two outside cookers. You have a griddle and a little uh, cooktop. So you can have your, your main course and your side dishes cooking. Like they do everything cranked up to 11, even adding an extra closet in the bedroom for more personal storage that just you just don't tend to see for most brands always doing one more thing than most brands now it has a couple hiccups for sure i'm going to point those out as we go and if you appreciate the good with the bad make sure you hit that subscribe button and uh let me know what you like and dislike on this rv as we go this is one of those floor plans i never know to start from the front to the back which is what we're doing by the way or the back to the front but i figured i'd kind of start with some entertainment features here because that's one of the things this floor plan does very very well a lot of bunkhouses give you that 90 degree neck wrecker entertainment center and this one puts you on what i call a boardwalk and park place where you're just direct like thx viewing uh getting blown away by the sound system we have that electric space heat and tootsie toast and fireplace down there and hold on I gotta back up. Did you notice, again, one of the big deal, I think 23 updates, they're, they're 23 stuff. Like if you look at their update list, it's very small, but every single thing they did, I feel is very high value, high impact. Now, um, they're one of the few brands that will still include some overhead storage in the slide. And one of the reasons I wanna zoom right over here for you is not just to show you the little bendy neck reading lights. <laughs> But um, the fact that both of them also have some USB plugs, so you could keep your, uh, you know, little devices charged up over there. Blackout roller shades all the way around. That'll be true in the bedroom as well. And you see how all the windows open for airflow. Our solar controller and our digital thermostat over there on the far wall, uh, on the bathroom wall, basically. And uh, again, just kind of giving you a look at the entertainment center where I was talking about before. We got that Tootsie Toaster bunion burner right down below. Or if you, um, you know, decide to just, you know, sit down right in front of it, it could be a butt baster. I'm not exactly uh, sure on that. Now, let me actually come over here. I want to sit at the theater seat. I like to do this to kind of give you a look from the driver's seat. So, like, when you sit down, this right here is potentially exactly what you might see. Assuming you are the exact same, you know, height and width and everything else as me. Uh, it sounds like we're about to tear a hole in the space-time continuum, uh, getting ultra-specific with some of this here. Notice, too, big barn door leading up to the bedroom. And normally front windshields and bedrooms don't do much for me, but because you can see that one from here, it helps. Like, when you sit down, the RV, uh, at a glance, doesn't have great campsite window coverage. But when you actually sit down here, when you're using it, it's not terrible. It's not the best I've seen, but it's not terrible by any means. Um, they've gone with a, uh, a 4K smart TV, which a lot of brands have done. I'm glad to see that. It goes hand-in-hand hand with their Wi-Fi Ranger, basically the RV having its own built-in um, router 
uh, for lack of a better way of saying it. And they're not only giving us full windows in the doors, both bedroom and living room, but also shades for those, which is cool. Now, over here, they are very cool. Like, Jacob's good about this, too, giving us, like, I used to say 50% thicker bunk mattresses, but I call them double thick now because the industry standard got worse and uh, Rockwood just kind of stayed the same. Uh, where you've got, you know, thicker bunk mats, USB plugs for upper and lower bunks. There's also household outlets on the lower bunks. And uh, the lights here are positioned where you can actually reach them. But notice too, they have that like just open air ladder right there just to make getting up and down to the bunks a little bit easier. And I think it's really smart. They actually pulled it away from that wall just slightly so you actually can get enough of your foot on that thing to climb up. It's, it's, it's fascinating to me. How many RV manufacturers build RVs that I'm I'm convinced they've never actually used? Like smart details like this, separate curtains for the upper and lower beds. Um, you got that fold up cargo bunk right there and that TV that we saw can pivot around for easy viewing from just about anywhere. Now behind that is what I call a pantry tainment center where you have like a giant pantry combo walk-in closet, broom closet kind of thing, hide and go seek champion space. Today we are looking at the 12 volt DC compressor fridge, but there is an eight cubic foot gas electric two-way option. Rockwood and Flax have also fantastic at giving us the largest microwaves in class and a larger 22 inch oven, uh, as opposed to the uh, 16 inch easy bake oven. <laughs> so just giving us some bigger stuff all the way around, which is nice. Now that table's free floating and that is a true u dinette. So if you actually need to wrap the whole family around that thing on a rainy day, you can make that work. Um, but the free floating table aspect, if you wanted to pop it outside, or if you're actually looking at this as a couple's camper and you want to pull that table over here in front of the theater seat for evening dining, you've got the perfect place to be able to do that. Um, the, uh, the I, Now, I just mentioned, I just call this bunkhouse a couple's camper, potentially, because there's actually a lot of people say, you know, I tell you what. I could take something like this. I could maybe, you know, load some cargo into that bunk area, use that as storage, maybe use that to transport some e-bikes because I don't want a toy hauler. There are some cool alternatives that you can use this trailer for. Now, by default, yeah, the counter space kind of sucks. That is one of the catch-22s of this floor plan. But I do like how they gave us that big removable countertop extension. And because it has that, um, that drop-down leg, it's actually very stable when you get it onto your campsite. Now, moving up here into the bedroom area, again, sharing the good with the bad, because there's a lot of good stuff. Like, let's hit a good thing here real quick. Um, I mentioned the word inverter earlier. If you look around this RV, there are multiple outlets that have a little sticker that says inverter circuit. So if you wanted to, if you're running just off battery power, like I'm doing right now, you hit that gray switch, that's our inverter activator, basically, um, above those household and USB plugs. And there you go, you've got household power coming off your batteries. Now that does come at an additional expense, so keep that in mind. These are available with 50 amp service. They're available with one or two air conditioners. And if you're looking at one with one air today, but you see that handy sticker by it, that's telling us this has 50 amp service, and you could easily add a second air conditioner to it if you are so inclined. But now, again, the good with the bad. This is weird to me. And they've always done it in this floor plan, this is a Camp Queen, and I think it's because this is a floor plan that existed before they started putting a lot of True Queen beds in, but they've always left True Queen bed space in there, and as you see, you do need to kind of come up with a storage space for that uh, countertop extension right there. There's not really a good dedicated spot for it. You have to come up with a solution. Now, speaking of that bed, they do a really cool like uh, under bed storage arrangement here with like a couple dresser drawers. You see that they, they do an interesting side stand split. You know, if you have your like phone chargers or something, uh, you know, beside your uh, a little mini fan or just a little bookshelf or whatever. But also including that big closet slide over here that just most brands don't do with the extra dresser space. So they're coming up with additional storage space here without the need uh, to extend the RV. Now it does come at the cost of, well, extra cost, money, and um, additional weight. So keep that in mind. You see the TV hookups over there. Now, moving our way from the front to the back, kind of where we began. Um, I'm not using tricky fisheye camera lens mode right now. This is flat angle lens mode. This does have a vaulted ceiling, which the RV's got about a six and a half foot sidewall, but that vaulted ceiling, it does wonders to making this thing look and feel just a little bit bigger. And I realized something. I pointed at this stuff and I talked about it, but I didn't actually like open that up and show you the storage above that 
or the fact that you do have that wall-hugging theater seat that doesn't require you to alligator wrestle that thing. Uh, last time I tried alligator wrestling, um, well, let's just say I got my licks in, but, you know, maybe that alligator won the fight. I don't have all my toes anymore. Now, working our way back to the bathroom, one of the first things I want to point out is that this has the Fajita Friday Fume Fighting Fart Fan up top here, as opposed to the Dollar Store 4-inch Fart Fan. Superior airflow, where you probably want it and probably need it most, comes standard on every one of these, with a roof vent cover, too. Great leg room around that porcelain foot flush stool, too. This is very, what I call, fluffy-friendly. And it's small. It's a it's a little thing, but a big thing. That little countertop extension, the way it really angles out like the state of Nevada. Look at that thing. Um, <laughs> tell me that doesn't look like the state of Nevada. It totally does. Anyway, it, it creates just some extra counter space, obviously, you need. But a great little ledge, if you wanted to put like a small little wastebasket with all those little, you know, you throw stuff at it and the, the junk drops in it kind of uh, flip tops. Now, with the six and a half foot sidewall, normally my head would have to be in the skylight, but with the vault, it's just enough that even with my hat and my shoes, I don't have to have my head in the skylight. And you see that this does have that handy little Aquaview shower miser, the little water saver system. And I think we pretty much got this one cooked. Let me know if you have any questions so far, and I'm gonna get her closed up and we're gonna take a look at it in Ramblin' Gamblin' Road Mode. And with this closed, there's actually a really cool function that's revealed. With the, the bunk set up in like travel and cargo mode, you've actually got a long, unobstructed potential loading area right here. This is big enough. I haven't tested it. I'm willing to bet you could get something large like a two-seater kayak uh, slid up into this thing. Although, if you're doing that, when you uh, make like a travel stop, you may need to slide that a little bit out the back door so that you can make sure you can do things like get over here uh, into the bathroom space. That door doesn't open fully, but it opens enough. Now the question becomes, what about the uh, you know the the rest of the the nap and nap, <laughs> nap and snack access? There we go, nailed it first try. Well, it's not like perfect, but it's not bad. Like we can get to the fridge and everything. And normally, when you see a countertop with drawers that open in this orientation, the slide blocks them. You can get these open enough that if you really have to just kind of like grab a fork or a spoon or a knife out of there, you can make that happen. The trick is, though, the super slide straight cuts off the bedroom. The good news is we got another way in. And that would be thanks to the fact that this is a dual entry door kind of camper. Now, this isn't everyone's personal favorite. Let me ask you. Leave me a comment. Is this a deal breaker or do you appreciate the fact that you could still get up here now i don't have that bedroom slide closed i ran out of power i wanted to get the main slide closed so that you can at least get the general idea but you can fully use that bed uh in transit without worry and if you're new with us if you appreciate that we take the time to close the slides and show you around all that extra detail opening up all the storage make sure you hit that subscribe button and if you're returning leave me a little hashtag nerd hurt or something like that in the comments section hit the like button all that youtube stuff i have to say we are backlit to beat the band with the sun coming up behind this thing, behind that little, I think that's a barbecue shop next door here. I might have to check that out one of these days. Uh, anyway, uh, what do we, where should we begin here? Let's talk towing. Uh, what's it gonna take to tow this thing? You know, a lot of people when they're looking at towing, they only look at just the dry weight of the RV. I really want you to also pay attention to the hitch weight on this one. Because this has this like fifth wheel style drop frame giving us that massive front storage compartment and because it has that closet slide all the way up front in front of the tires almost dead on the nose this has a fairly high hitch weight i believe it's over 900 pounds uh as a result there's certainly some half tons that could handle this but there's plenty of half tons that also will not properly hand this so kind of keep that in mind now, one of the interesting things here is they're doing a radiant barrier layering uh, down that nose cap and through the underbelly. But what's also interesting is this is one of the only brands I've seen that behind that nose cap, they actually do a one inch laminated wall. They're very consistent that way. And while you're checking out all the features here, let me talk about some things you can't see. Let's talk about construction. So the roof, the side walls, the rear and front wall, they are all vacuum laminated. Uh, they're all aluminum framed vacuum laminated. And uh, the floor is also aluminum framed, but it is a 5 8 tongue and groove plywood floor deck. They, uh, they do not use laminated flooring. Uh, this brand hasn't used laminated flooring since about 2015. 
they were seeing soft spots in their floors after a couple years uh, in high traffic zones. And they said, that sucks. We don't want to be associated with that. Let's get rid of that. So they did, you know, and they went with basically like a heavy duty fifth wheel floor. This is a brand that's actually gained a lot of weight over the last couple years, but I've also seen their service records continue to improve. Now I've never found a brand I would consider perfect, nor, uh, you know, and, and I've never claimed I was perfect or we were perfect, but they are a brand that uh, earned a gold level DSI award for consistently doing better work uh, on, on a regular basis re uh, last year. So I would say that they're doing pretty well and that's not a new thing for them. They've earned that a few times. Now back to the features we can see, double power awning, very uh, clearly covering both entry doors. Now, especially the, the primary entry door back here by the camp kitchen, since it's in the middle of an awning on a rainy day, you don't get spritzed in the face all the time. As I mentioned before, uh, a rear hitch and a rear bumper instead of or, and notice that they are uh, giving us like a hard shell spare tire cover. Just a uh, little things a little bit better. This is what, like if I could change one thing, this is what I would change. This little mini cargo door, I would prefer to be a more like full height cargo door that maybe swings open. If I had to guess, I would estimate that they probably just didn't want to cut their decal in half or something like that. Personally, I would have just raised the decal up and put it up there, but hey, that's just me. Now, as we work our way around the corner, one of the cool things we're going to see on here is basically like um, all of your hookups pretty much in one spot. Black tank flush, a uh, full hot cold outside utility shower. And you may have noticed how the um, camp kitchen actually had its own little kind of garden hose, cold water, high pressure sprayer over there. Fantastic way to, uh, you know, get the kids attention when they're playing around the campsite. Just spray them and, uh, you know, just be like, it was your mom. <laughs> now getting down here, uh, the underbelly is enclosed. Uh, has rain and barrier, as I mentioned. 12 volt tank heaters have been standard on these for years. One of the hiccups though, I try to share the good with the bad. I don't know that everyone's going to love the fact that this does have two stage sewer outlet uh, uh, kind of situation where you've got um, the uh, double stinky slinky hookup scenarios going on. This one up front here is just for the gray tank for the kitchen. The one in the back is the black and the gray uh, for the, um, what am I wanting to say? bathroom there we go please tell me i unlocked this please tell me i unlocked this but he did not unlock the compartment much like my friend andy dufresne from shawshank prison no yep all right there we go magnet hold back slam latches anywhere that they really could on this one and i'm going to explain what i mean by that in a second down here though we're under the back of the u dinette so a lot of RVs with U-Dinettes, they might have doors or drawers to get to the side access, but how do you get to the back of it without tearing it apart? Most of the time, you just have to half peel the thing apart. You don't have to do that here, which is kind of nice. Now, there is one interesting thing. Uh, I say this all the time, but every RV's greatest asset is also its greatest liability. That little closet slide that gives us all that bonus storage on these, it also means that it's a little bit wonky getting into this massive pass-through compartment up here. Um, it is nice that they put a little rubber stopper over there so that it doesn't go flying too hard and slam against the side of the RV, but it doesn't have any sort of magnet holdback. So kind of keep that in mind. I think that's a, it's a minor issue, but it, it's a little thing. Anyway, um, again, big, big compartment space here, but that up there, that is the uh, 1000 watt inverter uh, that will help power multiple outlets in this RV um, just off pure battery power. Um, one of the cool things there is, uh, you know, like if you just make like a little travel stop, you need to run like a stand fan or a coffee maker in the morning, you should be able to do some, some basic things like that. One thing I want to mention though, this is not intended to be some epic boondock off grid RV. It's got some, um, extended untethered features, but that's not really what this thing is exactly trying to be. A thousand watt inverter is not massive but it's also a thousand watts more than most brands give you. Oh, hold on, while I'm up here, let's take a look at the roof. Um, couple things, uh, the first thing we're looking at up there is the Wi-Fi Ranger antenna, TV, and like um, router, basically all built into one. But notice you've got that now 200 watt solar panel standard on these. That is one of the things I give this brand a lot of credit for. They're just doing, they've been doing factory standard solar, frankly, longer than about anybody else I'm aware of in the main market at least. 
So let me know what you think about this one. I'll leave you some links in the description to check for pricing and availability either in the Rockwood or the Flagstaff version. And remember, if you click that link and it comes up blank, it just means that we might be sold out and one of our team members can help you get some estimated figures on one of these. Um, I may also leave a couple links to some similar floor plans from other brands out there because everybody and their brother builds this floor plan but they all build it a little bit differently. And that's why I like to give you all these videos so that if you're out there and you're shopping and you're browsing, you can cross compare right from the comfort of your own home and choose the one that's best for you, or at least have a good idea um, before you come to our, I, I like to call this our dressing room and try them on like a pair of pants. Well, that sun's coming up over the horizon. I'm welcome to see it. Um, I'm welcome to see it. I need to go get caffeinated. Anyway, thank you for tuning in. <laughs> I don't <laughs> My videos always fall apart at the end like this, like some ACDC song. Anyway, take care, stay safe, have fun, happy camping everyone. I get much further away from this and you're going to need a telescope to see it. Yeah.